Hi everyone, it's Tracy here from Art Fibre Stitch. If you remember, we used this lovely fabric to produce these two totally different uh, interpretations of it. Two different pictures from this same fabric using it as inspiration. So now I want to do my third. Let's look at what we can see. I can see these stripy bits, they could be water, leaves, we've already done that. Um, I also see those big blobs and I sort of think, hmm, maybe that's bushes or something. So I start to cut out some bits. Here you can see I'm just cutting around a vague sort of greenish shape, cutting the yellow away. And it sort of looks like a kind of a tree line maybe, don't know. So I'm picking up this other shape I have here, which is going to sort of resemble maybe the top of a tree in the foreground. And I'm just doing some snipping out. See how I fold it over and I just use my snips or some small scissors and I, I just snip out some shapes. So it's just, it's more lacy. It's not a, um, a block of fabric that I'm putting down. And I grab some contrasting green, something, something that looks good up against. And about now I think, oh, let's have it uh, in landscape format, just like the other pictures. They're all with the long edge at the top rather than at the side. So, okay, well, that's, that's made me uh, a few little bits short, so we'll have to cut some more. Look at this lovely orange. I keep a little bag full of snippets that I've been using in the past, just just because I might be able to use a tiny bit of it. So I pop that down, a little snip and, and tear works well, you get some interesting shapes. That's a gold gauze in the sky, another snip and tear here. And this is a, uh, a sort of a dull, darker blue, and I'm thinking, let's pop some of that behind that gold there. Give us a bit more bluishness. And now we've got this bottom corner where the green just ends too short. So I'm cut another bit of the green and I start cutting out and just making a more raggedy edge so it's not so obvious. Now I'm just going to uh, snip and tear a little bit of this nice orange satin or maybe put a little bit of something else behind that ragged edge there and I think we're good to go. We've got a good start. So here we are. We've chosen some pieces to get us started. I'm just using a little dab of glue to hold things down, just temporarily. Then see how it looks within a, my little 5 by 7 aperture. And um, I'm quite happy to start. I like this little piece that I chose to be the tree. You can see I already cut some bits out, so I'm just going to do a little bit more. You know, it could be branches, you know, the holes in between the leaves, just those areas that you can see through. So it's not a big block of colour. And with the other colours behind, it's really, you know, going to show up much better. Now I've got this bit. It's a, it's the yellow that I cut off that top of that other strip. I'm not too sure about it, but I'm going to pop it in and we'll just see if we can make it work. I'm going to put it there, um, but we're losing it a bit. So putting a little bit of here of some more gauze. This is just to sort of, you know, shade that background a little bit so that when we put the yellow back on, it's going to uh, show up a bit better. See? Nice. Good stuff. So what I'm doing now is I'm just popping a few pins in. And um, I'll do a little bit of uh, tacking. So I'm just going to loosely stitch and we're ready. Okay, now I've just grabbed a couple of threads to get started. These are a stranded floss. I've got a green, it's a deep olive green, a light bright green that's almost a yellow, a gold, maybe even a bit of this teal just because that's pretty well that color as well adds a little something so and i like to have a little bit of um thicker and thinner and all different kinds of threads so i'm just going to start with two strands of something here 
can pop a little knot in the end. And just to make sure that it's all sewn down, just a few lines across. And that's tucked here. And I'll just make sure that I get a few things sewn down. Just a running stitch. I'm just going lazily, a gentle curve, and it'll it'll make sure that I do a few different things. I'm not just sticking on the edge of that orange. I'm going up into the orange and then back down here to produce a line down there. Back up into the orange again. see how I've got these these were meant to be like a like a, almost a tree line because that's what I saw in that fabric so I'm just going to do the same thing below it like a another layer of trees almost so I'll just go up and down like I have cut that there Now that may not be too visible and I quite like doing my first lines not that visible because I'm still deciding if that's going to work, you know. So I like doing it so that they are uh, they're hardly seen. I know they're there and if I like that idea then I can do some more like that. Or I can make it stand out more with a darker colour or brighter or whatever. So for now, I'm just going to use the rest of this thread to go back and try and hold down another little area whilst I'm at it. Eventually, when we've got it held down enough, we'll just take out that bit of um, tacking. Now you might see this thread more now that I've got it on this yellow. It's a, a big contrast there. But you know, these are meant to be hills and dales and, you know, fields. So I'm going to pull that up a little bit so I get a bit of that nice aqua underneath. Do you see that? It's just another little dimension. I'm just going to stop now because I've run out of thread. You want to leave enough thread so that you can come through to the back and do your ending off. And just a simple two little stitches on top of each other. And that is it. Let's knot it off then. Won't come undone. You won't see it. And you can just slip it. There you go. So the first lines are done. And you know, we will get things like this happening. I don't mind. I quite, I quite like using that. But, you know, don't worry. Just go with it. You can always pick those bits off or you can sew them in. And um, that'll be totally up to you. I'll probably just muck around doing a whole lot of what we've just done. Um, something I would like to show you, I think, is uh, you don't need to do... This is like applique. Applique is when you attach a piece of fabric to another. And um, we've got that, but... Um, there's other ways to sew it down and I'm just thinking right now that with this I'd like to do something a little bit um, a little bit different on it I'm going to use a, a few different threads three different colors but I'm just going to start with this green again and I'm just going to do a bit of seed stitch so it will hold it down. It's going to put some marks in there. And I'm going to start with a dark colour. And then I'm going to vary it a little bit. So that we get those lovely light colours showing through on top. But it just sort of adds to that. The marks that make that look like a, a tree. You know you could imagine they're little, little leaves or something. So 
so I'm not even going to try and you know get that edge that I cut you know in in those sort of uh, wavy lines I'm not going to try and do that I'm just going to do this I'm just going to do some seed stitch sometimes it'll be over the edge sometimes it'll be on the edge you see what I mean I've got as long as it's random I'm going to go out like that I'm quite happy sometimes it'll be completely off like that one but it's all good so I'll continue doing that whilst I've got this thread on what I will be doing is more lines um, like I said I'm going to try and bring some seed stitch in to be leaves here I might do something similar on this one see how this one works out first because they're beautiful fabrics and I think it's going to match in with our our um, triple that we've made out of that one material very well indeed and you see how I'm making that edge very um, not as easy to see where it finished disguising that edge and that material's fraying a little bit but actually that's a good thing that's really good because it just looks more and more natural the more that you do and it doesn't just have to be down the top you can do some more down here you know Can you see how it looked speckly to start with, that fabric? That's what made me think um, of bushes and things. I can see it in there, very speckly. See how when we used these different colours underneath our holes, we got, we got a little bit more variation in. And it looks like the tops of the trees where you can see through, it's not as dense. You're looking and you can see the background. So I like that rather than just a blob that we put those holes in there and something that you can see underneath and it just gives you that little little touch of reality and I like to use these pearl cottons and I'll discuss that in the in the um, in the past videos but I just like that they, they um, I like to have that variety that we've got light and dark and shiny and not you know I just like a bit of texture so I think I'll use it to start going across here well when I cut this piece out I just cut bits snip 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 out the top of that just to um, because this finished here very abruptly this piece and I put this piece over the top and cut that out so that it was more um, more in tune with what we're trying to create and now if I just do a little bit of I mean you might think oh that's a dreadful thing to have to sew down but not if you do the seed stitch you see so we're just going to do that So I use seed stitch a lot and you've probably seen it in some of my other videos if you've watched where I say that it's really good for shading and making marks like this and for applying things down. But look how I'm blending this colour into that colour by using, you know, a colour that's sort of a little bit brighter than this, not as bright as that. But it's sort of uh, blending them a little bit so that works well to do that little bit of seed stitch don't worry about your tacking stitch that'll come out easily enough later there we go quite happy with that I could take it all the way across and go into this if I wanted 
I can I can stop and do some lines. I can mix it up a bit. So I've done some seed stitch. Now I'm just going to do a little tiny bit of running stitch again. At this point I didn't know whether to do seed stitch or more straight stitch but I think I could probably do both. I'll just do some straight stitch to start with and see how I feel. I've actually got three strands of this gold this time. I've only used two strands on everything else. This will be a thicker line. And um, I'm not sure where I want it yet. I'm just, so I'll put it somewhere where it's not that noticeable, like here on this orangey bit. I'm taking it up into this darker color. Can you see the contrasts that are always there? You know, this one up against this one, and the light. Sometimes it's more subtle here, where we've got these lovely subtle shades. But um, this is very bright against that. It's a very dramatic line. But doing this little bit of seed stitch allows it to blend. Look at the shine in that sky. We're getting it from this angle. What I really wanted to show you though, is I've done a little bit more here. I used some of that teal to go backwards and forwards. And I also had that um, the orange uh, held down by some of that. And also into some of the tops of those lines of trees. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to continue doing some seed and some running stitch actually just the one stitch all the way and then we'll just have another little recap see if we need anything else and um, I think we're going to be good once it's sewn down I just have a little bit of a snip and get rid of that tacking and uh, pull it out so as I said just to finish off I couch that down at the same time as I'm doing some seed stitch so I'll grab a nice thread that will match in, you know, like this one. You could use a few different threads. So some, sometimes we'll be holding down this, sometimes we'll not be holding it down. We'll just be making little leaf shapes. I'm just going to pop that first one in there, I think, over the edge. I'm using this because it's nice and bobbly. You've seen me use it before. I love it because it, it uh, represents a lot of different things in my art. But you could use something else. You could just do a lot more. Um, or you could do French knots. You could do beading. You could do all kinds of things in this tree. That's added a little bit of texture in there. So, like I say, you could do more. Right. Look, this is where we finished. I put this little bit here on. But there's something about it that I'm just not happy with. And this happens sometimes. So I want to show you what we can do. I put it in the surround so I get a better idea of how the picture looks. Um, and then I've grabbed a... This is just a sticky bit of label piece strip of paper sometimes you can use your hand but because these are long thin bits I just sort of piece of piece of paper or tape or something and I can go over things and I can say is it that that worries me 
is it that? Do you see how that totally excludes the orange and I can get a better idea? Was it that? Now, I really think it's probably that yellow. Um, you know, I have thought, I know I wasn't feeling very well, so I did, I'd stopped it a little bit early, but I'm just not happy. So I want to do something, something that will make me feel happier with it. And that yellow, yeah, I'm not terribly happy with that. What could I do there? When you have something like that that you're not terribly happy with, I'm just going to see what's underneath it because I'm just not sure. Just not sure anymore. I'm just going to have a little... Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so I could do that. I could do some little bits of cutting out. I could ragged that edge a little bit more so it wasn't quite mm, that line of yellow. You can see it disturbed me anyway here and I was trying to bring some and I uh, didn't really do enough of the seed stitch to make that work. But this is this is good because it shows you different things that we can try. So I'm just going to try that for now. Now a way to do that is just hold it up like that. Take a tiny little snip. When you get, you could use a pin or something to start making a mark there. But when you start to do that, you can just give it a little. Oh, look at that. You know, we could do something like that. So I was thinking, I, I'm going to use a two, uh, a two-pronged kind of attack on this. And I'm not going to let it go until I'm a little bit happier. Because I just think it's a bit substandard. Now, if you're bored with it, you put it away. You can always come back to it, like I have today with a few fresh ideas, you know, and I think, I think that'll work. So I'm just going to take a few snips out, and then what I could do is just rough up those edges a wee bit. Ooh, look at that, that's nicer already, isn't it? I haven't done this edge here, so I also want to fix that, and, hmm, and... You know, that didn't quite reach either. Perhaps we could do something there. You know, I really am misbehaving, aren't I? But this is what I wanted to show you. you. You can pick up any old thing that you had done and you weren't terribly happy with. And you can play with it until you are happy. So, I could do that. You could add some more stitching. I'm just, just playing now. I don't think I'd ever get to the point where I'd just throw it in the bin. I might throw it in a drawer and that might sort of tell me, um, wait, you know, let's say, wait, you will have inspiration at some stage. Oh yeah, I like that better with some, some dark clouds, I think. That'd be nice. And then, you know, because, the reason I did that was because this isn't quite read the, read the edge. I'm just going to cut that out there. There. You know, and that kind of thing where we can have it looking more natural, cut a bit more there, a bit more out of here. You know, just like I've shown you there. Now then, that might even be enough. But what I was thinking was, um, what I was thinking was, you know, maybe I want something. I was thinking, let's try and do a little... Not a wheat field, but, you know, with grasses that are catching the sunlight. I mean, in all the other pictures, we put some shiny thread in, and I haven't done that here. Anyway, we'll see. I've grabbed an assortment there. Thick and thin, like I usually do. Different colours. Nice gold. And, uh, see how I go. But I just wanted to show you, sometimes you're not happy. Sometimes you just got to keep playing. And that's, you know, it's not a failure. It's just an opportunity to try it a different way. Think about what you might like. Everything here has been very uh, bright. This colour is a dull colour. I am happy to let some of that through. And I would like to get some more neutral colours in to sort of um, stop it being all just bright tones. That's what I'm thinking. So 
did that for the sky that's happiness now I'm just going to snip a little bit more here and then we'll start on trying to create this wheat field Now with just anything, all you've done is break up that expanse a little bit, you know? It's better than this half, for example, where we haven't done it. And um, that makes me happier. So I'm not sure what the moral to the story is. When you feel like it, just rip into it. I'm not sure. But that... Yeah, that helped me. That helped me. I feel happier. And that's why we're doing this. Something that you can feel, you know, you've done something good on. So I'm going to just do a series of, of just long stitches. I think I'll start with a darker colour and see what happens here. And I'm just going to do some little long stitches. And they'll cross over some and they'll be higgledy piggledy. Sometimes I'll start lower, sometimes I'll finish higher, and it'll be very staggered. Isn't it a magical journey how you you change? You know, we we had this fabric as our inspiration, and we used it in two other completely different pictures. And I, I just really I like the idea that it sends you on this little journey that you're not sure where it's going to take you and you keep adding some people um, feel a bit frightened to not do something um, that doesn't have a pattern but really it's um, it's just for you why not pick up a piece of fabric and thread and just try it and see what you come to try out your stitches it doesn't even need to be a picture you know it could be something that's just totally abstract a nice blend of colors I quite like doing that sometimes I think it's a good idea to have before and after photos and you can look and see oh wow that did make a difference because you become then so absorbed in the new one that you forget what it was like before I'm much happier. That was the two strands and that was the single strand. So much happier with that. Now I'm going to take other threads. I mean this one is a, um, a variegated. It's a stranded. I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take a single strand. I'm just going to keep going. I'll do that a few passes of that and then we'll come back. So here's where we've started to add. We used a green, then I used a nice um, one that brought in a little lighter tone. So it was a variegated one and a, and a rosier tone. See what I mean? Just mixing it up. But now I've grabbed a thicker thread and I'm just playing with the idea that you know how we could do bullion knots or all kinds of fancy things to create the seed heads on our grasses. But how about just a little tiny seed stitch going up and down, you know? I think that would work too. So we'll try that. And look how it turned out. You know, with just this, the one stitch, the one straight stitch, we got some long ones, we got some shorter ones. You know, we got darker and lighter and thicker and thinner. But that's all we've done. And we've created this nice blending and also a little look of grasses or something that's helped settle down that, that yellow and bring it all together, I think. So with that, and cutting out some of that gold gauze so that we had the blue sky happening a little bit and, you know, some more cutting out to let some of the, the teal colour behind the yellow through, I think we've done quite well. And we finished it off a whole lot better. So it was worth going back to. So I hope you enjoyed my little adventure there. Um, my name's Tracy and Art Fiber Stitch is my business. If you like this video, then do please press like and subscribe and you can see what 
what other little things I might get up to. This was part three in a uh, three, one fabric three ways little series. And um, I, it's been really interesting. And I hope you've liked it. So, thank you for watching.